Hello Meridian. Um, this is a video response to your last video. Uh, I'm going to play it and go through it and tell you a little bit about myself and my experience. Hello everyone. I knew that I was going to have to make a follow-up video to my previously not so well received effort entitled Know Your Enemy. While I really was expecting and in maybe a small way hoping that most of you would be able to extrapolate its main theme without the burden of critically attacking its metaphorical facade, I was disappointed to see that the occupiers occupied my page and camped out flailing with their ridiculous rhetoric with very little opposition. It's my... <sighs> All right. Um, I just watched your last video. I must have missed it. Um, no big surprise. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit about myself uh, and about my relationship to you and YouTube. Um, I thought of you as almost like a person better than myself and uh, you know I see your face isn't in this video so I'm guessing you've scripted it and obviously this isn't scripted um, you know and maybe you uh, use a thesaurus uh, maybe you didn't I know you have a pretty good vocabulary and that's something that I've always respected about you or at least you know I thought that you had a good vocabulary. Um, I haven't watched you live, but I can imagine that most of your videos are scripted, and therefore you have the luxury of using a thesaurus and can, you know, um, sort of project a larger vocabulary to the world than you may actually have readily available. That said, your last video, um, I, I think you're confused. Um, you know, you're, you're sort of getting the overall picture from a direction that a lot of people seem to you to be led. Um, yeah, there's a lot of talk about campaign finance reform and things, but that's just because that you know, well, I don't want to say just. I take that back. Um, a big factor in that is that uh, it's that season. I mean, it's, this is every four years we get used to it. <coughs> or have gotten used to it. And uh, a lot of young people um, don't, don't want to. And I don't blame them. I didn't like the idea um, when I was young, younger, and I still don't like it today. Uh -huh. But now I've seen alternatives. Uh, I created this channel um, because I both uh, dislike religion and love science and I wanted to show the world that how much you know I dislike religion and then gradually as more and more people woke up um, kind of teach them what I've learned over the years because I've never been religious um, I've always been fascinated in science um, you know, when I wasn't wasting my time playing video games or spending my time playing video games, um, you know, figuring out puzzles and things like that is what I enjoyed most. But when I wasn't doing that, I was usually uh, reading uh, magazines, Scientific American, um, Sky and Telescope, uh, Astronomy, things like that. And I even taught astronomy for nine years. And much like grappling ignorance, I lost my job 
um, because of because of religious people and religious intolerance. Um, it was a, a group that came to the planetarium and uh, the children were well behaved, you know, probably because they were scared not to be. Um, but the instructor was very rude and obnoxious and and uh, she just didn't tolerate me talking about evolution or about the history of the universe or you know talking about <laughs> dinosaurs and things I mean all I, all I did was pretty much regurgitate science the most up-to-date science while at the same time saying you know so far this is what we know this is this is what we know so far and apparently none of it uh, coincides with her interpretation of Genesis so you know she talked to my boss and there was a disagreement or not a disagreement but my boss kind of I don't know maybe took her side a little bit I came out of the planetarium after hearing them talking about me and uh, we had a little three-way <laughs> uh, it's two older women than me and um, yeah we um, you know she just she just said you know I just I'm fed up with it I don't like it the, the woman from um, from the church and uh, and I had to keep in mind what was most important her flawed past, you know, her opinions of the past and how things worked or should work today in the present or uh, the children. And ultimately, I, uh, while they were waiting out by the bus, I mean, I went back into the planetarium. They walked around the museum for a while and uh, eventually they were outside, you know, and I was trying to explain some things to my boss and you know I, I guess she said she said things like oh I have to be more tolerant and uh, I just decided you know fuck that fuck that I, I don't have to be tolerant I don't I don't have to tolerate it anymore and I walked outside and I addressed the children and uh, I I asked them what they would you know with I asked them if they enjoyed the show you know and they said yes and uh, and I, I don't remember the exact words. I, I hope that it's in the minds of someone out there. But I said something along the lines of, uh, you know, what would you rather I do? Teach you science? Um, or, or, you know, not. Uh, and I, I, like I said, I can't remember what I said, but I... I, the, the greatest thing that I remember is that the children cheered. They clapped, you know, they smiled, they raised their hands, you know, and they were, they were happy. They knew what I was saying, and they knew what was going on, like with the woman and everything. And I, they listened throughout the entire show, every time I mentioned something. And, uh, about, you know, something that contradicted something in the Bible, and, uh, about how the woman made noises like a like a pig um like snorting and, and you know those kind of noises so um a week later my boss talked to me again and uh and i guess it's taken her that long to come up with a reason to fire me and she said that she wanted everyone working at the planetarium to have a degree and she knew i didn't have a degree or not at the planetarium, but at the uh, museum, to have some sort of, you know, degree in a field. And she was like, could be any field. Um, you just need a degree. And uh, and at the time, I was pretty close to having my uh, associates in physics, which, you know, I mean, that's the best thing that we have to offer here in, uh, in Alpena, Michigan. It's a small town, but we're the biggest one for 100 miles around. So... We are the city for a lot of people. Um, 
anyway, uh, I was fired. And from that point on, I, I, I don't know, my desire to, um, not my desire, my, um, my drive to continue to compete with other people, um, like education wise, and, uh, I realized that, that there's a lot of fucked up shit in the world and that fucked up shit needs to be straightened out before um, it can really take off, you know, and I know that we've done great things, like, since I've been alive, man, so many amazing things have happened, you know, the, the shuttle program, which was great, you know, far more successful, you know, I know a lot of people dwell on the, the accidents, but for the most part, it was very successful, um, you know, I, I wish I could remember exactly how many, uh, like 130 launches, and, uh, only two, like bad, I mean, that's, that's not bad, um, but we did, we did pretty good, and I think it was more like 135 or 136, but the number's not important. It's, it's big of the number of launches and only, you know, two accidents. Um, and it was tragic losing those people, but, I mean, we've done other things. We've sent all these rovers to Mars. Um, you know, the internet just bloomed. And, uh, the World Wide Web and, uh, and communication social networks, YouTube, this, um, it's, it's really amazing, I'm, I'm really happy about all this stuff, but at the same time, I, I've noticed that I've always been interested in finding um, new things, and I always wanted the best. And, uh, kind of look back on that, and I, you know, who determines what's the best? Marketers. That's kind of what it boils down to. Um, as far as the populace goes, you know. So, alright, I'm gonna keep playing your video, but you know that last, I mean, you just mentioned the last video, and, uh, you know, you, you mixed things up. I mean, I, I could just stop this video right now and, I, you know, say a couple more sentences and stop it. I, I want to keep making it. It's going to be really long. I don't know if you'll watch it. I don't know if anybody else will watch it. I don't know if you'll put it as a video response. But I'm just making it. I want to let you know some things, some more things about me. And, and you know, I, I take this stuff personally. And uh, you're kind of moving down a peg for me and obviously a lot of other people. giving you a heads up. My opinion that we have a responsibility to be critical of bad ideas, especially the ones whose perpetrators have no intention of being faithful to the tenets of their own cause. I was sent an article today by a viewer who was reminded of my video after reading it, and I... Th yeah, we do. Just talk. I mean, you know, you, you're getting into this mode. This is how I feel. Um, you know, you, you've got an ad on your video here. Um, you're probably trying to make money from YouTube, from your own popularity. Um, you don't have to be, you don't have to try to be something that you're not. And I'll let you talk about this letter, which I also disagree with. I thought it would be a good idea to paraphrase some of its content because it really does a pretty good job of cutting to the chase. We are all the 1%. All right. Before I let you finish, um, not all Americans are the 1%. Uh, 
Um, I mean, there is a 1% in America, but there is also a 1% of the world. So, I mean, my focus throughout the whole Occupy movement has been to remind people about a lot of the things going on in the world and, you know, about how America has 25% of the wealth, 25% of the, the, um, the resources, essentially, and um, it's only 4% of the population. And, you know, among those, those percents of uh, people just in America, of those 4%, um, which is 312, 320, um, perhaps even as much as 350 million people, um, but a few, only a few, um, though the 1% have 40% of that wealth. So, you know, um, what is it, 10%, just to, just to the 1%, 10% of the world's wealth to 1% of the American population. Um, and then if you go down, go down to 2%, and that's 51 to 52% of the wealth. So, just the top 2% alone have more than the rest. But, it's the 1% that essentially, you know, with the most, to dictate things. And, if, you know, they have the power to affect people. But, but what do they do with it, you know? <sighs> what do they do with it? Um, you know. And, and I know you mentioned specifics. Go after specific people. Um, you know, I have lists of names. I wish I could put a person at the top, you know. Yeah, like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. I know they both agree that uh, they should be taxed more. But those taxes would just go to the American people and not out to the world. When really, the, we are essentially, or the more so the people in America that have the companies. Um, they... They're the ones that are shipping jobs to places where it's cheapest. Is that wrong? Um, it's arguable. Um, but they're also the ones practicing and, you know, stripping people of their resources, go, like in Africa, for instance. Um, going in there, taking things and giving people measly wages. And then, you know, like diamonds, for instance, selling, you know, diamonds to people in America who have the money to buy them because you know diamonds and gold and platinum and silver you know there's not much of it left here um, it's, it's been shipped around you know why you know why we still value those things that just they just represent wealth I like to say I've never been a big fan of wealth myself uh, money Money makes people do things that they wouldn't otherwise do. And usually those are bad things. Things that they don't want to do. But they'll do them for more money. The more money, the more uh, worse things they're more likely to do. Like uh, soldiers murdering people. People looking away when they see a starving child and just walking through and not finding food and not sharing food. Yeah. Things like that. Let's set aside the emotion and absurdity for a moment and focus on facts. We are non-believers and skeptics, after all. Remember? Facts? Those things we're supposed to rely on to okay, arrive... Okay, okay. Facts. You say facts, but then... Like, at times you say, like, everyone... What I see from the Occupy movement is that everyone is this. That's not a fact. You you aren't digging deep enough. Um, 
there are a lot of passionate people that do care about the world in this movement. I, I would say the most, if not all. Although it's very easy to get caught up in local things, you know, city, state, federal, um, national, you know, essentially. Um, but yeah, it does feel kind of difficult when, when you hear about something happening on the opposite side of the world. And for America, that's the Indian Ocean. But, you know, whether it be uh, Malaysia, Afghanistan, or Africa, or uh, the Middle East, in this case. Um, we all, we all care. We, you know, but some, one of your commenters mentioned it is a matter of proximity for some people, you know. Um, I myself spent time in Occupy Lansing for, you know, three weeks or so, and it was 20, 21 days, 22 days, um, not important, I was, I was down there for a while, and you can see some of the videos on my channel, um, I, uh, I met a lot of good people down there. Some of them were more concerned with uh, not being able to afford to live themselves. And some of them were more concerned with others not being able to afford to, uh, to live. Some of them were children that grew up in um, families where their parents made a lot of money. And and they couldn't find a job, so you know, they're, they're out of their uh, out of their comfort zone, kind of, and so something's wrong. Um, and that something is inevitably growing. Uh, debt only increases. Uh, so, you know what I'm talking about? Debt to, like, the Federal Reserve, for instance, or the local banks and interest. Interest is one of the big things. Um, but there's there's a lot more to it. I have that sound conclusion. Now here are a couple for you to consider. At last glance, there were nine hundred million people in the world who lived on less than a dollar fifty a day. The top one percent of households in the United States averages about see all this kind of information I think you should have taken I, I don't know where you live but I'm sure there was a movement somewhere within driving distance if you have a car um, I never have so I took a bus to Lansing to to occupy Lansing and to occupy Flint um, and I uh, helped out here in my hometown Locked by Opina. Um, you know, not as good a turnout as Flint, but for its for the size of this town, we did pretty good. Um, anyhow, you, you should have taken this information to people there and brought it up at a general assembly. Um, but these are these are things obviously you seem to have forgotten, like the 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 process. You know. Or that you just don't emphasize. You, you talk about how they're posting things about campaign finance reform and um, other things. Those are my, my interest in this area. Um, I am kind of on your side, but you are pushing people away that, um, that are your allies. And, you know, maybe you're trying to do it to motivate them, you know sort of wake up the people who, you know, feel like they've woken up. Again, you know, so I, I bet it's a continuous process. We continually learn and educate each other, hopefully. And, and you've done a good job of that throughout your YouTube career.
about $1,500 a day for each person in the household. The average household in the United States, however, averages $55 per person per day. Oh, there's averages. You're just lumping. See, you're you're saying facts, but you're missing the point. You're saying averages, okay? There are a lot of people. I'm one of them. I I live on seven hundred dollars a month, less you know, about eight thousand dollars a year, and most of my friends are in the same position. Um, for whatever reason, we don't work. Um, a lot of us live on social security, you know, or what's called supplemental security income. Is it, is it our fault? You know, is it our fault that, you know, there's about 45 million unemployed people in the United States and only 9 to 10 million jobs? Um, should we just create jobs? Where do we get the money? Where do we get the money to start up our businesses? We go into debt. People don't have the money to keep our businesses going. Um, it's, it's in the banks. It's sitting on Wall Street. Hence, Occupy Wall Street. It's sitting in shares. It needs to be flowing through the economy for the economy to work. Um, and it's just, it's not, you know. It really does. It needs to flow. There's only so much money, you know, spread among so many people or around the world even. I mean, if you look at it that way, uh, if every country on earth has a form of currency, um, in order for transactions to, you know, to be made, um, there needs to be a flow of money. And when that money is put on stock markets and ready to be withdrawn at any time, it's not flowing, okay? Okay, and in contrast with that, the global average is $9 per person per day. So based on those statistics, all you'd need to be in the top 1% of the world would be an income of about $34,000 a year. Yeah, and how many of us have that? And that's again the world. I mean, these some of these people that are saying, you know, whether they're the the one percent, I mean, or the ninety nine percent of the world, or ninety nine percent of the United States, or the ninety nine percent of their state, or the the ninety nine percent of their home, of their hometown. Um, you know, it's a matter of perspective. You, you go back and forth. You know complaining about people complaining just about America and not about the world. I, uh, I understand that. There's there's more to it than that. You know, if, if the people with the money did more with it, did more good with it, this would have never happened. You know, I mean, maybe. Maybe if the cap... 35 percent um, for people who make more than uh, I don't know 210,000 or so um, I can't remember 260,000 but it's it's the cap 35 percent and uh, so they get you know and it doesn't matter if they make 260,000 or 260 million per year, income-wise, it's still only 35%. So if it's going to gradually go up, you let it keep going up. It just makes sense. And the, the more money that people make, the more taxes you take from them. If that if that's the point of taxes, I mean, like people like me that make maybe t less than 10000 per year or take in less than 10000 per year, um, we essentially don't have to pay taxes. Um, not at least uh, income tax, but we still pay state tax. But again, not really my focus. My focus is more on kind of the thing that uh, 
some of the messages that I've, I've shared with grappling ignorance before. Um, not in video form like this, but before about, about what's going on. And, uh, you know, some, some people have thanked me. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, it's been so long since I've been really active in the YouTube community. Cocktopus Prime. Um, when I got back home from Occupy Lansing and I saw Cocktopus Prime um, post a video and I even commented to him on his video um, about about the Occupy movement essentially and I said you know thank you thank you for, for what you're doing and he almost uh, instantly responded with no thank you That meant a lot to me. Uh, so, I just, I just want to say that, you know, and it means a lot when a lot of other people, you know, especially people, you know, who have less than I do. And uh, in some ways, I consider the people in debt. Because so many Americans, um, when you factor in their debt, have less than nothing. They have a lot of stuff, they have a car, they have a house. They're, they're so far in debt. You know, they have an education. They got a bachelor's degree in something. And uh, they have a student loan to pay off. But if they can't find a job, they, you know, what are they going to do? Um, you know, me, I have a pretty steady source. I'm not happy with $8,000 a year. I don't mind it. You know, I wish everybody could live like this. It's, you know, or even just, I don't, I don't know, you know, who, who needs uh, hundreds of millions of dollars a year? No one, no human being needs that much. We don't. We could easily live on $100,000 a year. You know, that'd be the cap. I'm living fine on less than $10,000 a year. Um, you know, maybe, maybe a cap. And even somebody here in Alpena. They said we should have a maximum, uh, maximum income. Uh, a man, you know, who I just I started talking to on the street, and I asked him what he thought about the economy, and that was almost his immediate response. You know, I mean, he he said that we need to have uh, well the, a few more questions, but eventually, I mean, he he seemed like he had really thought about it, and he said that there should be a um, not a, you know, a minimum wage, but a maximum wage. And, uh, I mean, he, he said that people should only have, uh, like we should cap it at 600000 Um, why 600000 I don't know. But that was his idea. Um, and so, I mean, that was here in Alpena. So, I just want to give him credit for that. And, uh, he lives on the north side of town, which is kind of our, uh, that's where the factories are, so it's lower income housing. So, but people aren't, aren't, you know, people aren't happy. But I mean, they, they should be really happy, obviously. I mean, that's what I see as kind of the point that you're trying to make, is that people should be happier. Um, but but how? I mean, when, when you've got so many people above you, you know, and, and you see it all over, and... Uh, you know, like when we were kids, you know, and people talked about the American dream like it was um, everybody had the opportunity to do that. That's not possible. Okay, there's not that much money in the economy. There's not that much wealth. Um, but, you know, technologically and uh, based on the resources, everybody on earth could live like this. I see no reason why we couldn't. No, absolutely no reason. And we will, eventually. I mean, not all of us, but, you know, if... <sighs> okay. People are unhappy. In America and around the world. Um, and, and what you should be doing is guiding them. You know? Not, not 
and saying you're a piece of shit because you're wasting your time on that when when there's the fucking dragon you're spending your time fighting a troll when a fucking dragon is coming and you know that that's your dragon okay you know and there's a big battle going on and you know, maybe the dragon maybe he's just passing by you know or maybe he's gonna eat this roll. Um, no, there, there are dragons. We all, we all have them. You know. And and based on the information, based on what we know, based on what we get, you know, the dragon analogy is bad in this case, but um, or metaphor. But you know, some people only know so much, and we all only know so much. Obviously, we can't all know everything. Um, so, so really don't, don't do the fact thing and then do the average and then just say, well, you're all average, you know, so you're not, you're, you know, no, no, 99% is a, a, a representation of it, it means something, and, you know, saying we're all the 1%, no, a lot of us care about more than just the United States, you know, which with all the ads and stuff and everything going on with that, you know, I think it's good that we're informed who the president is, and it's good that we're informed on, on where the money for their campaigns are coming from, um, and maybe that should be the big focus, I mean, where where is the most money coming from, and who's giving it to who? You know, are there people out there funding both Barack Obama's campaign and, you know, one of the Republican primaries campaign? Um, you know, I wouldn't doubt it. They probably, all they have to do is pass money to each other, but it should be on the books somewhere, right? But, you know, we don't have enough people um, interested in that. Or, you know, you can funnel it, you can launder it if you really wanted to um, through a series locations or you can really just dump it in a community you know you dump it in a community and then have uh, some of the local businesses or one of the local business owners in that community um, you know so it passes hands from uh, Republican into a, a economy or a community where there's you know Democrat pretty much runs all the businesses and then he's going to make money ultimately because it's going to go through his hands and then he can put what he takes out of that and put it into Barack Obama's campaign you know there are ways for all this and money it just allows people to manipulate things and uh, you know it's pretty underhanded there's a lot of shit going on that I'm sure you're not aware of a lot of things that I found out and you know, I know you, th you certainly know things that I don't Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Additionally, the video I made was not a call to arms to grab your camo and go on a secret mission and rid the world of its plague of despotism. I may have clumsily used death and starvation as the control quality that others should be evaluated by, but it wasn't an indictment of the average apathetic American because they cared more about fast food than they did about starving people dying. It was an illustration. Gun. That's that's terrible, dude. I would expect more of you than that. The saying the average American makes this much money and the average American cares more about McDonald's than they do about starving kids in Africa and the average American. So you just lump everybody together, you know. You know, I'd be tempted to just average you out. Um but you're just you're you know better. Are you better than average? No. You're not better than average. ...of how ridiculous the Occupy movement is in protest. They're specifically designed to conjure the images of the 50s and 60s where black Americans were being bashed with riot batons and rinsed off the very streets with fire hoses. Now this is a, you know, it is a social movement, okay? That was a social movement. 
this is a social movement. This is more than just social. This is an economic movement as well. You know, someone in Lansing kept emphasizing, you know, not a political movement. Socioeconomics, focus on that. Um, I believe it's, it's everything. You know, we should democratize the economy um, along with politics. And, you know, I, I, I don't like this whole republic bullshit. I don't like that America is a republic. I would like to see it a direct democracy or, um, you know, at least not with a figurehead. You know, um, you know we can have, continue to have people negotiating with other countries and things, but those people should be elected, maybe permission, um, um, and then, you know, evaluated per result. I mean, just, you know, let the people who care do the voting on the issues, you know, whether it's good or bad for them, whether they care about it, let them vote on the issues, you know, not on somebody else to do the thinking for them, to, to act like they care for them. Look up, if you're not familiar with it, look up Direct Democracy. I'm, I'm sure you're probably somewhat familiar with it. But, you know, and don't, don't take your lack of There's a lot of good people in this movement. A lot. As if they were dead leaves. It's meant to identify with the protests in 1966 with the same sort of Emphasis brutal pictorials of students leaves. being arrested you and beating because picture. of the monumental humanitarian and foreign policy failure of the Vietnam War. You should be ashamed of yourselves that you are coattailing on the memory of those men and with Dude, fuck you. Fuck you, dude. Ashamed of yourselves because you're coattailing? You're lumping people together and then you're saying, fuck all of you. Well, for all of their sake, fuck you, Meridian Frost. Alright? A lot of us are doing a lot of things. And you're too fucking blind and too busy to pay attention to all that. You know? And this has just as much to do with them as, you know, everyone, everyone, I don't care, color, you know, class, everyone, money affects everyone, except people, you know, who don't have to worry about it, you know, like the people that are on, on welfare, and the people who are extremely rich, you know. You could you could put three hundred thousand dollars in uh, you know bonds or shares or I don't know what the system would be called what the you know thing is called but there's enough of it out there like Wall Street where people they don't have to work you know but they're making tens of thousands hundreds of thousand dollars a year just sitting on that you know not in the case of three hundred thousand but you know people with three million. On Wall Street, 30 million, you know, let alone 300 million. I mean, some of them have so much wealth, you know, they never, never have to work. And then they can just pass that on to their children. Children never have to work. Nope. So, so where's the focus on? You got the working class, and they don't see who's pulling the strings. They don't see where the money comes from. They don't see where, uh, you know, you have their boss, and their boss, and their boss, and their boss. And eventually, to work your way up, you just got to ignore more and more things happening below you. You know, oh yeah, keep things straight. Keep the blocks in place. You know, every time you take a step up, you just add more blocks. And, uh, but that's it. They don't have to concern themselves. It is slavery. It's slavery. There's no, nothing... 
nothing else. I mean, I would happily work if I if I could, if, you know, not if I could, but, and not just work. If I'm going to work, I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, it's my life, you know. I'll die. I will. I will. Before I will work as a slave again, ever, 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 ever. I made that choice already. I'm not, I don't care if they take my social security away, you know, I will walk down south, you know, it's snow outside, and it's mush, it's a mess, you know, but I'll put on, I'll, I'll sell stuff, get a bus ticket somewhere, I'll travel, I will, and, you know, maybe, maybe I will be homeless again someday, like I've been in the past, I mean, you know, but as a, a somewhat educated person, you know, I I want you to know that you know we don't have to work. We don't have to you know, work for the master if we don't want to. You know, like you're saying, oh, it's just cold hard truth. Bullshit. Okay, money is an invention. Okay, politics are an invention. I mean, essentially, it's, you know, it's kind of like, hey, you, know, you don't kill me, I'll kill you. Um, you know, oh, he's got a stick. Hey, don't point that stick at me, you know, all the way up to nuclear weapons or, you know, chemical warfare or planes, you know, being used as missiles and driven into buildings, um, predator drones, all that shit. It's fucked up. We, we still kill each other. So we need to learn to value life. We need to spread the value of life. You know, to places where it doesn't exist. To, to the minds. You know, especially children. Especially children. You know, be a good teacher. And value, teach children to value life and not not to hate, um, or, or just to love, don't worry about the hate, just focus on, on love, you know, the love of life, you know, I mean, and just making life as good as possible for as many people as possible, I really mean as many people as possible, everyone, the whole world's focused, the 1%'s focus, the top 1% should be on the bottom 1%, that's where their money should be going, but, you know, they don't see it's not a good investment for them. Okay? They'd rather, you know, spend it in advertising for uh, the working class. gotta pick a side and it seems like you're, you're you're lumping you know things together you're not you're not as intelligent as you think you are I mean making this entire movement about police brutality it wasn't until a month had passed with news okay. sources hammered by the stupidity of the occupant police brutality the stupidity of the movement Boy, where the fuck were you? You know? Why don't you educate the people that are actually out there on the street? Go to a general assembly. Be a part of the process of direct democracy. Okay? Talk to the real people. You know? It's it's a steady build-up. Okay? They need information. They need support. I mean, like, ah, pff, you know, no, you are not me, so I'm not going to help you. No, we need to work together, okay? Humans help each other, you know? Money just gets in the way, all right? I would love if we didn't have money. That's not the case right now. That doesn't mean that's going to be the case forever. We don't need to have money forever. 
We don't even have to have these bodies forever. I'm not talking about afterlife stuff. Something else. Well, you know, evolution. Genetic engineering. Okay? We're not going to be like this forever. You know? Money's not going to be around forever. It's going to change and change and change. You know, and I'm sure there's people with a lot of money that are banking on something like credit being the new thing. And how do you accumulate credit? I mean, I'll admit, uh, 20 years ago, that was my big idea. You know, I didn't like money back then. And I thought, well, hey, people could work for credit. They could learn things for credit, take tests on what they learned, you know, sitting in front of a computer, and, uh, and then they get credit for passing tests. You know, now fucking Facebook has credit. Ugh. You know, but they're not giving credit to educated people. They're giving credit to people who play games and win games. It's gambling, but the odds are in their favor. In the favor of Facebook, because you always lose money. Anybody who understands math knows probability. There will always be 50% of people who are less intelligent than average. Always. Keep that in mind. Okay. But there's always 50% of people who are more intelligent than average. Our movement. That we actually knew what was being protested. We all remember Keith Olbermann reading the Occupy Movement's official comment, only to roll our eyes. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. See, this whole we all and um, I know there's a word for it but you're no it's false the way that you use every one these absolutes essentially all everyone you know Occupy movement all of you um, or the Occupy movement the Occupy movement is this no false you you don't get it you missed somewhere you are the one who fell prey victim to the um you know everything became blurry and you just saw the general picture and the details you missed out on the real details the good ones okay people people like you and, and you know, I, don't, I don't know if I was doing the right thing I felt like I did you know? so, I, mean, I did what I, I felt was right and there are people who deserve a lot more than I do um, they deserve real stuff for, for their real effort you know and then there are people who you know who we should welcome into this world, okay? Just straight from the go, you know, children, um, especially children, you know, anybody, I think anybody with children, they just shouldn't have to be expected to, to pay, um, you know, and that can kind of be seen as a process of elimination or a, a restriction, you know, if you don't make more than $100,000 a year, Sorry, you know, um, when your baby comes out, it will be disposed of. <sighs> you know, that's kind of what it is, and it's really disgusting, and it's happening everywhere in the world, you know, as far as where money is the main focus of the economy, the consumer economy is. The fucking capitalists are dictating everything to the people below, trying to control the economy. You know, hey, I see it as something that happened after the French Revolution. Pretty much, it went from the theocracy. The theocracy started to lose power, and the uh, was it the plutocracy, essentially, gained power. The commercial class, the financial class, the people, you know, money. And the manipulation of money um, became a guiding thing. Now, 
before we had science, before the age of enlightenment, um, you know, at least modern science, the way we know it now, um, it was easier to use theocracy to sort of guilt trip the rich. But now as people are losing, you know, we're losing that. Um, theocracy is losing its power. You know, pastor can say anything he wants. You know, people know that there's other people out there who are doing fine without God. You know, the pastor says, you know, you'll go to hell if you don't. They can choose not to. And they really don't have anything to worry about, but they go to church and they do their thing anyway just to appease their community and, you know, play the game. No, the financial class and the richest have far too much power and, and, and life is not about money money gets in the way in my opinion so, so. since Psy as every polarizing socio-political grievance was listed off machine gun style into the ether that was the moment we all realized that the movement was populated by a bored generation with nothing much better to do a few months passed, and Occupy people started talking about corporate greed. And a bored generation with nothing much left to do. I like this. Are you trying to just cause controversy? Um, I'm just curious, a little tangent. Um, I feel like you're just trying to attract attention. And uh, I'm afraid you might lose attention in the long run. Or maybe you're just trying to stir the pot up, you know, again. I mean, spring is right around the corner. And, you know, all these lazy kids, you know, are sitting inside playing video games. They might want to go back out and, you know, hang out at the square with their friends. With people who actually, you know, care about them and they can share their thoughts really how fucked up things are and not just that but what we're going to do about it that's the thing man revolutions take a long time they can take 50 years they can take 10 years maybe as little as uh, one year okay so give it time don't give up campaign finance reform but to my absolute amazement these issues became front and center in the trollosphere as amateur orators took to the tubes to stand up and cry out for reform in the way our political system was financed. They latched on to the idea as their new wave of rhetoric that would fuel their ire to the bravery of the next sit-in. However, when questioned about campaign finance, no one had a fucking clue what was going on. They didn't know. Fuck. What the fuck? No one had a clue. Did you? interview everyone who are you talking about you know quit being so broad okay if you have something to say say it specifically about specific instances with specific people all right no you don't want to list the names but but you know, I mean, get an get an approximation. Seventy five percent, ninety percent, ninety nine percent. You know, you could say ninety nine percent of the ninety nine percent. You know, didn't know the finer details of campaign finance reform, but there were no doubt some people who were fully aware of it. I've met a lot of people. Who knew a lot about politics in this movement and uh, while well, you were wasting your time or spending your time excuse me um, making videos and doing whatever you do you know um, I was out there meeting people I would have never met before um, politicians yeah I mean I even shook the hand of the man the uh, governor not the governor but the uh, mayor of Lansing which is the capital of Michigan um, not just shook his hand that's not really the important thing he just went around shaking everybody's hand and it was only uh, five of us at the time you know and of the people that were 
part-time occupiers. They were essentially, uh, you know, maybe 25 of them would come by, you know, maybe once or twice a day, maybe two or three times a week, you know, maybe on, just on the weekends, once on the weekends, um, just to be a part of the General Assembly or just to, you know, ask if there was anything that we needed. Supplies, food, water, um, tents, people brought tents, um, everything, okay, everything that we needed to keep going. Um, and, and Flint was a beautiful thing too. I was only there for three days, but Flint even, it's, it was pretty impressive. But they're, they're on a private lot or were, um, I haven't checked up with Flint seen how they're doing in a long time but uh, seems like a long time um, yeah so uh, you wait and see you know, maybe what you're saying what you're doing will have a, an effect but you know you stir in the pot that's kind of I, how I see it you know you know man you're smart enough you know that there are things that aren't right in this world. And religion is a huge one of them. But, you know, the, know, the financial system. Is there, is there really a name? You know, um, not just the economy. But it's those in uh, control of the economy and control of the minds of the people. You know, media has kind of taken over where uh, churches have left off and even like video games and television and all that kind of stuff and even Facebook you know you can kind of you know push people along in a direction get them talking about finance reform get them talking about whatever candidate um, you want like they're gonna save the world no um, I would like to see that stop where we put so much you know <coughs> or trust or um, whatever or somebody essentially <coughs> excuse me um, where we count on someone to do things for us and not to, you know someone for a lot of people not just one person I mean like I shovel I shovel the sidewalk out front um, I don't get paid for it I enjoy doing it um, if those people down the street started counting on me to do it, um, maybe I wouldn't be so inclined to do it, because I just kind of do it on a whim, as it stands, I can do it when I want to, you know, I could spend a week and not do it, or I could do it, you know, right now, because it's snowing, so. Oh, that we had been fighting this battle for the last ten years, they were kind of like Americans landing in Britain in the middle of World We. We, who, who's we? You? You've been fighting campaign finance reform for the last 10 years, and who else? Or, you know, you and the, the 5%, the 2% of, of um, the American public, um, we, uh, humans, uh, we Americans. Who are you fucking talking about? Or two saying, who the fuck is this Hitler guy anyway? They know nothing about what it means to fight because they don't know how to fight. Their Antoinette philosophy has massive stores in the, the cake shop we, reserved they, for the you, vast numbers them. of fragile minded people who populate their ranks. Their hijacking of the currency of history lays to waste countless acts of personal courage and sacrifice. They can make a mind numbingly hyperbolic statement like, we need to get the money out of politics, as if every political venture didn't rely on 50 other operations to succeed. You know, those just open up room for a discussion. When people make statements like that, when you make statements, you, know, you, you make a statement and it may trigger a human to respond. Responses you have already to this, but 273 comments at the moment, and I'm sure there's maybe 300, 350 
Uh, now it hasn't refreshed. Probably hasn't refreshed. I don't think it does. But um. Anyway, these these things, these words, these sentences, they trigger responses. And I'm glad that you spent so much time you know, coming up with these words. And, and you may, may have not. This may be the way that you communicate all the time. Um, but I doubt it. I really do. Um, that's probably scripted. And, and again, you probably, you know, added just words for flair. You know. It's not just big, it's enormously huge. Society should not be blamed because you're too lazy to deconstruct these issues to the level required to make a well-guided accusation. You're too inept to see that you're trying to put a square peg up a spider's ass. Those of us who have That's actually clever. been arguing for campaign finance reform and consumer rights have some advice for you. Stop buying shit you don't need. Convince the world that individual... From now on, I think you keep going into things that, yeah, we, we do agree on. Why didn't your lazy fucking ass go down to a general assembly if you did or did not? But I'm assuming you didn't. Go down to the group, you know, and raise these issues, okay? Instead of fucking blurting like a coward on YouTube, you know, where, where you can just not respond to comments, you know, you just come on, oh, you see your dislike bars bigger than you maybe expected. Dude, what are we going to do? You know, work our asses off, save up a big chunk of money, and then dump it into a charity. No. No, it's unrealistic. Okay? We can't all do that. You know? And we won't all do that. Because working your ass off means somebody's benefiting from that. They're gaining, you know, they're sitting up in their freaking penthouse suite or their office or flying around the world in their jet, having little meetings in places. And they're just talking. They're sitting and talking like this, you know. Doesn't this get fucking boring? I mean, I love absorbing the wealth of information on the internet. I am addicted to it. I've always been addicted to information. Reading, whether it's reading encyclopedias or hanging out in libraries, which anyone who knew me in school could attest to. Um, you know, or occasionally, you know, competing with people in games online, which I spent a fair amount of time doing. Um, we had to gain information and then use that information sort of to, to compete with others and that was information you know maybe you paid ten dollars maybe you paid fifteen dollars twelve ninety five a month for a, a subscription to a, a game you know but you learned and then you show other people what you'd learned and it didn't take a lot of you know physical effort to do um whether it was, you know, their parents, our parents who bought us those games, or whether we had jobs that we didn't like, just so that we could do things that we actually did like to do. Um, but the old ways need to change. Alright? The internet has... <laughs> I was one of, you know, I was going to say fucked it all up, but the internet has, has given us a sense of freedom that we didn't have before. And, uh, allowed us to communicate with people all around the world and really find out firsthand from, you know, from, from uh, people's experiences what, what it's like in China. You know, China, not so good, but not a good comparison because of their, you know, lack of communication. But, uh, you know, with India, with, uh, Europe, 
I know we probably get a lot more people in Europe because they speak English, we speak English, but uh, in Australia and stuff. But we have translators now. I mean, Google Translator, uh, Babelfish, you know, all that kind of stuff. We, if we, you know, wanted to, which is another thing that I try to encourage people to do for a little while. You know, I, I do it occasionally myself. Um, talk with people in Russia or, or. Uh, African countries where those people don't speak English. And, you know, I've, I've learned a lot. And yeah, it's not. Occupy like Movement is not about America, man. Get your fucking head out of the sand. Okay? Get out of the dirt, raise your head up, and look out over the horizon. And I can just look, look right down, man. You know? And don't let the surface of the earth blind you from the fact that, you know, there's countries all around us. There's people, you know, Africa is that way. And there's people starving right now in Africa. Yeah. You know. And if people, when they look down, they saw the other side of the earth instead of seeing the ground, you know, and just focusing on the ground. And occasionally their minds could go and, and think, you know, what that's like over there in Africa. Or what it's like in, uh, in Mumbai right now. And all those, those squatter towns um, where people are living. You know, we're in China. You know, in China. You know, things, are, things are tough. bogged down with what you're seeing. You know, that's just that's just maybe that's the majority of what you're seeing. Okay. Maybe maybe it's because people like me have uh we are out there gathering information. Or are people, you know, like a lot of members of Anonymous who are spending the winter on their computers gathering information about companies, about Politicians about uh, you know CEOs and and uh, you know crooked bankers and stuff They're gathering up that information, man, because they know when it's time to act. You know, people are going to need it. You know, when we we don't freeze to death from the the cold freezing, you know, the snow melting and then refreezing, sapping the heat from our bodies. It will be ready, and uh, Russia right now is uh, amazing what they're doing right now. You should look into what's going on in Moscow. Just keep your keep your eyes open, man, and be an educator, you know. And don't insult people like that. You know, educate them, teach them if these are things that you're concerned about. You know, really, because the big major message that they're going to walk away with is that you're a jackass. And I know you're not a jackass. Dual politicians are corrupt with evidence of their corruption, not conjecture and your That's faulty intuition. Vote based upon a full understanding of the Follow policies Anonymous of those you vote for. Write. Go yes. To, go to paste. Write bin. legislation paste that bin. covers your concerns and defeat ideas whose principles are founded upon fleecing you. Save your money. Become involved in responsible activism. Support organizations <coughs> who echo your convictions. Responsible activism. Re responsible activism. So, keep keep working, whatever job you do, and you know, gather that money, and then spend that money, um, protesting against that. Well, you know, that makes fucking no sense. It's absolutely no sense. You see something you don't like, you don't do it. People are going to a church, you disagree with that, you don't go to church. Okay? Likewise, 
if you work for a bank and you disagree with what's going on there don't go to work it's that simple you know sure you got bills to pay you know and good luck finding another job if you have bills to pay but I mean ultimately we don't need money to live we don't we just need stuff you know shelter you know electricity it's internet connection it's just stuff it's not money and in its simplest form money would not be a problem but it's it doesn't just go from you know person to person and it works its way up and, and sometimes not so much down just kind of more up you know just kind of gradually works its way up and there's people at the top you know they can put it back down or they could just keep it so yeah Mostly talking out of your ass. I'm sorry, but I think you are. I think people agree with me on that. Save your money. Be a voice of outcry when the world swells with crimes against humanity. Sacrifice your phone, your car. Save your money. Where? Um, I think that's actually one of the fucking things that's ruining the economy is that people with money are saving their money instead of spending it so that it circulates so that there's fucking money for people to spend um you know saving your money is not what saves the economy it's spending your money that saves the economy and where do you save it you save it in a bank that bank is making money on your money that allows them to make more loans, you know, which puts people in more debt. Do you not understand how this system works? It's just not that simple. Sorry. Are your cable TV? Your expensive furniture and every other material thing you are capable of sacrificing. So you don't have to become indebted to the biggest country store there ever was when it comes. Did, did you say sell everything? So you don't have to become indebted to the biggest country store? Um, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Um, I know that there are people out there um, who do or have sold the things that they own pretty much. They keep maybe a couple suitcases worth of stuff and they travel. Um, there's a lot of homeless people like that. But there's also um, people who have set up networks where, you know, they stay here for a week, you know, help out with chores and things and then go somewhere else and, you know, they don't have to pay to live. You know? Uh, if we all really wanted to we could probably do that and if we did that and the people who are relying on other people to work for them uh, would pretty much be out of the loop when they and then they would lose their power um, so it's a process and starting out at the bottom pretty much working its way up okay don't, you understand that this is a good thing. I know you do. It's going to take. It's going to take time. It's going to take time and, uh, and energy and effort and support and information. Good information. Put good information out there. Do some research yourself. Make some videos. Get some good information. You know, are you doing that? No. You're doing the same thing that you fucking easy ass did with religion. You see it's stupid. 
you know, for the most part, and you just bash it. No, you're just trying to bash this because you see a bunch of things you don't like, and you just kind of lump it all together and bash it. You know, I disagree with religion for the most part as well. Absolutely against faith. Absolutely against the idea of a spirit, or the idea of any of that sort of thing. Um, afterlife's, yeah, you know, waste. It actually makes real life um, a lot less, seem a lot less important. You know, when the truth is everybody knows that if they just make everybody else think that they were a good person, but actually got away with all their little dasty, greedy, greedy you know, things, then, uh, then the rest of the people will talk good about them after their death. And their family will be okay because they'll be like, oh, he's your ancestor? You know, oh, that's your great-grandfather? Well, I've heard he was a good man. putting some good stuff out there for the people who are going to do something with it. You know. I know you're, you're involved in some good things. But keep that going. You know, after the dust settles from this, there will be a lot more. Um, a lot more time. Except the rest. The rest of the time in the universe the rest of the generations of the future. Certainly more than there ever have been. So, it will be good. You know, it's just a, a bump. And we'll get over it. Or a pothole. And we'll get over that too. And in the process, we're going to, going to change directions. That's the important thing to keep in mind. We're going to get even better. So, look forward to that. Probably in your lifetime. It's time to further your education. Invest in alternative energy technology. Prepare the world for the coming population explosion. And education, technology, population explosion. Education... Pretty sure we do that now, okay? Yeah, we're not all going out there and getting degrees, okay? But that's because there's too much money necessary and student loans are a fucking scam, okay? That's indentured servitude right there. But that information can be free, um, easily with the internet. Uh, I learn all the time. That's what I love doing, most of the time. Very little of the time I'm not really learning things, even when I walk to the bathroom, I guess I've learned something. But, um, no. Out there looking for good information, really good information, new information. Okay. And there's a lot of that in textbooks, yes, but there's a lot more of it on the internet, and it's free. Technology. Um, as far as energy, um, yeah, I think pretty much, the 1% pretty much have that, you know, energy coming from fossil fuels thing on the lockdown, um, and we need to change that, and in order to change that, we need to essentially overthrow them, you know, and throw them out, so, yeah, maybe not physically, just financially, stop feeding them, stop buying, you know, gasoline so often, stop driving cars so often, walk more, you know, they don't make money on you when you walk, you know, carpool, or, um, you know, ask your neighbor, you know, I'm going to the grocery store, would you, you know, is there anything you need, I will pick it up for you. have two people go to the grocery store at the same time, you know, or different times when one person could go, come back and walk with a bag of groceries to their neighbor's apartment or house, 
and say, hey, you know, here you go. Here's the milk and the eggs you need for the next few days. Saves gas. Saves energy. So, I think it's more, more important that we need to manage what we're, we're doing now and not so much, uh, you know, invest in cleaner technology. So maybe cut down and be more resourceful with what we have and what, what's, you know, what's coming to us. And yeah, we will, we will definitely have cleaner technology, and we'll have better technology, we'll have new technology, and, you know, science, you know, has made a lot of that, made everything possible, I might try to say. Um, pretty much, yeah, we wouldn't be too, doing too well if it wasn't for science. I mean, everything from food science to political science to economic science to everything figuring things out and putting that information to use and then uh, what was the last thing you mentioned prepare the world for the coming population explosion no um okay population I think it's good that we go the population keeps going up some would disagree uh, I have my reason and I can fully explain that and they might still disagree it's fine, um, but I do feel that you know humans are essentially the greatest thing in the universe. I mean, we haven't got any signals from life elsewhere, and as far as we know here on the planet, you know we're pretty much it. We're pretty much got this under control, sort of, and uh, we're doing pretty good. And we'll become a type one civilization, hopefully uh, in our lifetime. Um, not sure if you're familiar with that, but yeah, look it up. Um, but, but yeah, we're doing pretty good, so, not, not too worried, you know, sure, global warming, uh, things are getting a little warmer, but a lot of things happen, when it gets warmer, the planet regulates itself, for the most part, it's not going to be a runaway effect, and yeah, if there is, I'll eat my words, but, doubt it, highly, highly, doubt it, um, the climate always changes, it's, it's a cycle, pretty much. You know, angle of the sun, a little bit of wobble, some parts warm up more, some less. But yeah, we're pumping a lot of stuff into the atmosphere, a lot of carbon dioxide. So using cars less, um, less factories, you know, don't need just to have factories for jobs. Um, money can flow around, and a lot of things can be considered more source of income if we keep financial system I'd like to see a resource based economy but hey we'll see what happens I don't think money's going to be around forever probably for the rest of my life I don't know I don't know it depends on how good this how good this uh, really gets but yeah prepare yourself for the coming population explosion um what do you think there's going to be like uh, a 1969 another baby boom um, I wouldn't mind I'd love to see the population keep going up um, I'm fairly certain that this planet could easily hold more than 20 billion people um, perhaps perhaps even as much as a trillion if we managed it properly you know but we're, we're going to have to convert more of the ground beneath us into biomass in order to do that. A lot of people don't understand that. But and I think we're kind of we're doing the opposite with a lot of our chemical technology, killing microbes and things. You know, just trying to wipe out everything, um, good or bad, microbial. I think that's a that's not good. There's a lot of chemicals that we're throwing together in you know factories. You know, starts off in a laboratory, but then once it gets down packed, switch it over to a factory and then pump out, you know, um, persistent organic pollutants that just, uh, just fuck things up. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see the error of our ways, and we'll get better. Yeah, enjoy it.
But at the, in the meantime, you know, change. Change. Real change. We change. Okay? And you need to change, too. And for massive food and water shortages, devote some time to helping others in whatever way you're able. Learn how to build a computer. Save your money. Don't buy shit you don't need. Saving People money. ask in the video what I sure personally do to make the world a better place. I do some of the things listed above, and others that I haven't listed. But I'd say my biggest contribution to date is the 1.2 million views I've had on my videos on this website. I've collaborated with some pretty great people in a joint effort to rid the world of the dehumanizing ideologies of religious dogma, with the ancillary Thank effect you. of showing the ramping intellect of our... <coughs> and thank you for that, Meridian. That's why I've been watching you. You know? That's what drew me to you. And every other atheist on YouTube. And every other, you know, science popularizer on YouTube. You know? Fuck, fuck Neil deGrasse Tyson, man. We're the heroes. You, me, everybody else. All of us. All of us. Okay? The community itself every individual in it is the hero of the story the community as a whole we don't need some sort of pinnacle you know let's worship neil degrasse tyson and then when he says you know i don't like whatever biology astronomy is where it's at biology bad I know he won't say that, but what I'm saying is if he did, if there's some reason, you know, just one little policy, Syria or something, he makes a comment on Syria, a whole bunch of heads turn, and all of a sudden, hmm, I've always loved Neil, he says it, maybe there's something to it, you know, and he can guide people if he really wants to, that's why I don't like the idea of heroes or, or icons, or representatives, you know, or, you know, that, mayors and politicians and governors and stuff. You know, maybe, maybe 200 years ago, but things have changed. Things have really changed. And we need to change. The system needs to change. Youth, that there is a different light to be seen. And it's the one that glows from every one of us. Take care. That little thing at the end. Take care. Um, yeah. You take care too. Meridian. And everyone else that happens to watch this. Look forward to the future. Always.